Back in the 60s, the chemical industry was freaking out about bugs. The real threat to the survival of man is not chemical, but biological, in the shape of hordes of insects that can sweep over our croplands, ravage our food supply, and leave in their wake a train of destitution and hunger. We now know that the threat we face is not that insects will rise up and crush us, but that we are destroying them. This is Life Support, a series about why the global nature crisis matters for our lives. There have been some frightening studies published about insect decline recently. One study in German nature reserves found the overall mass of flying insects had dropped by three quarters in under three decades. And in Puerto Rico, a team monitoring invertebrates from bees to beetles, found a 45% decline in 35 years. Now, not all insects are declining, and because the data takes so long to collect, there is a lot we don't know. But insect declines are a problem, especially when it comes to food. I'm Alexandra Klein. I'm a professor here at the University of Freiburg in Germany. Dr. Klein led the most up-to-date assessment of how dependent global food production is on animal pollination. Klein's study found 87 crops which depend, to some degree, on insects and animals to pollinate. They make up 35% of the food we eat and provide most of our vitamins and minerals. It's probably not a problematic for you and me living in uh, Germany or in the UK because we can just go to a drugstore and buy our vitamins. We can buy vitamin C, A, all these kind of vitamins. But I think this is not possible for all the people living in the tropics or in developing countries. But it's not just pollination. Predatory insects like spiders, ladybirds and wasps control pests, preventing insects such as aphids or mites from destroying crops. In fact, it's thought that predatory insects protect at least 10% of all food production. And that's not all. Insects are fundamental to the food web of many ecosystems recycling nutrients that soils need to produce crops. Don't think about pollinators, think about soil organisms and all these functions that are in the soil where we don't have the insects or the organisms there and the soils are not functioning anymore. And when we have a really intensive agricultural landscape without any organisms in the soil, any organisms above soil, it will not function at one point and then it's not possible to produce any crops. In the last 60 years, the agriculture and chemical industries have changed our land. Habitats have been destroyed, pesticides are widely used, and monoculture, growing the same crop on a huge scale, is widespread. This isn't great for insects. So do we have to choose between protecting insects and farms that can produce enough food and make a profit? Sustainable agriculture expert Dr Lynn Dix says, not necessarily. In rice fields in Asia, you can plant nectar providing plants along the side of the the rice field and that provides resource which increases the numbers of predatory wasps and parasitic wasps and then those wasps do better control of some of the leaf hoppers that are the major rice pests and the result of that is that you can use less insecticide. She also says it's possible to turn things around. Ecological research shows that it takes about four years if you change the management of farmlands to increase, to turn around the numbers of populations, say, of wild bees in a landscape and get the numbers up again. But we may not have time to spare. Back to that 75% decline again. If you have a 75, 76% decline over that period of time, that rate of decline cannot go on. If that's really happening everywhere and isn't just an anomaly of that particular place, then we really are facing a crisis and we need to do something about that that's, that's, quite, that's extremely urgent. The 1963 CBS documentary you saw at the top of this episode contains this amazing quote from the scientist Rachel Carson, whose book, Silent Spring, brought the world's attention to the dangers of chemical interference in nature. So please subscribe to Unearthed, check out the other videos in the Life Support series, and I'll leave you with Ms. Carson. Man's attitude toward nature is today critically important simply because we have now acquired a fateful power to alter and to destroy nature. But man is part of nature, and his war against nature is inevitably a war against himself.